All right, today I'm going to show you how to download an emulator. Uh, first off, I'm going to explain what an emulator is. An emulator is basically like having an old system or like a system on your computer where you could download games for free without like having a console basically. Right now, I'm going to show you how to download an NES emulator. NES is a really, really old system, so it's discontinued now. And for those that wanted to play those games but don't have an NES, I'm going to change that for you right now. Alright, so let's get started. First, what you want, we're looking for an NES emulator. One that I really recommend is called N NES Topia, well, or Nestopia, however the hell you call it. All you have to do is Google it and the fourth link after you type in any uh, uh nestopia you should get a link for emulator zone and it'll show you the whole basic description of nestopia nes topia whatever and it'll show you the minimum requirements that you'll need to run this program and sure here shows a preview of how it how the games run and how it works so after you're sure that you want to download it, you just hit the download and then you save it. I already have it saved, so I'm not going to download it. And after it's done, you open it with WinRAR and extract all the files, and you get something like this. I renamed it NES because, it's, yeah. Alright, so you open it up, and after you extract it, you have all of these files. You really don't need any of these files. They're not really that important, I mean, I guess. But the main thing is right here. Nestopia.exe application, whatever. Alright, so we're going to open it. And over here, it just runs. You don't have to install it. You don't have to put it on your computer at all. All you have to do is open it up, and it works. So after you got that done, we we need to get some games. There are a bunch of different ROM websites out there where you could download pretty much any game that came out for the NES. So there are a bunch of them like romhustler.net. You go on the side and it shows a bunch of emulators and ROMs. So you just go NES and they have a huge selection right there in alphabetical order so any game that you want you just click it find it and download it there's also romnation.net <clears throat> basically the same concept have it in alphabetical order and have a wide variety of different games and last is the oldcomputer.com you enter it and then you go to the NES section Nintendo NES on the side when you get to the main menu and over here they have ROM selections and they have they show you the total number of ROMs that are available from uh, the certain letters of the alphabet. So number from all the way to the letter L and M to Z. And they show you how many ROMs they have. They even have Japanese ROMs for all I know. But I, don't really, I never really knew any Japanese games. So whatever, you guys experiment with that. So... Example, I'm just going to click on one. Wait for it to load. I'm sorry, guys. My computer's kind of slow. I'm recording, so bear with me. All right, once it's done loading, it shows you all of the different ROMs and games that they have. So I'm right now, I'm going to look for... Ghosts and Goblins. I saw a video of it. It seemed like the hardest game for the NES. So I'm going to download. You're in the G. They have Galaga, a bunch of other stuff. But we're looking for Ghosts and Goblins. Zip. Click on it. Gotta get that. Forget the freaking advertisement. It's really annoying. Just skip it, and then it'll go straight to the download. Uh, so you save file, you press OK, but I already have the game, so I'm not going to cancel. It's basically the same concept with every other site. 
Like over here, if I want to find ghosts and goblins, I find it like I normally would. But it takes like 10 seconds over here to download. I don't know why. And same thing with NES, um, romnation.net. You just download and you're all good. You, op you have to have WinRAR to open up these files. Otherwise, you won't be able to. Alright, so once you're done, I made a separate folder for NES games. And I have a bunch, of, I have a few games. I have Tetris, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Pac-Man, Ghosts and Goblins. Alright, so you open up Ghosts and Goblins after you open up the zip. Well, I'm going to open it up to see what's in it. Uh, Ghostsandgoblins.nes. If you open this without NES Topia, it won't work. It won't run. You need an emulator of some sort. Alright, so after you done ex after you finish extracting it, you have it right here. So now we're gonna go back to Nestopia. You press file and you press open. I'm going to find my file, and he has games, Ghost and Goblins, and you open it. And over here, as you can see, we have Ghosts and Goblins, the actual game. So we're gonna boot it up. It's an it's a really old game and it's supposed to be the hardest game. I'm not really gonna play right now, but the only downside to this is you have to use your keyboard. I'm not gonna really play right now. Just show you that it works. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close it. All right. So. As you can see, NES Topia works, and the games run. You can save, you can't do all of that on your computer. And the really good thing about this is each game, right here, it shows you the details of the game. The size is only 128 kilobytes. That's less than one megabyte, meaning this game is less than one song uh, that you would normally have on your computer. So, I mean, you could store a lot of games on here. Alright, so that's basically all you have to do, and you could run pretty much any emulator that you want on your computer. But right now, I'm going to show you a rather cool thing that you can do with your NES emulator, so I'm going to cut away, and I will show you that in a second. Alright, right now you can see that my... That Ghost and Goblins is running on my computer. Right now I want to show you a pretty cool trick that I found out with the use of emulators. Right here you see that my Xbox 360 controller is on. But my Xbox 360 isn't on. How to do this? I got myself one of these. It's a wireless receiver adapter for your PC. So you can hook up all of your wireless accessories. Uh, from your Xbox 360 onto your PC. So you can basically use your 360 controller or accessories on your PC. With the use of one program, I made this controller compatible to emulators. No hacking, none of that. So watch. Check it out. This is all real. Check it out. Bear with me, guys. See, this is all working. See, all of it's real. If I want to pause it, this is all real. This was with the use of one program. I will show you how to do this in another video tutorial. The link will be in the description and on the video in annotation. So click on that if you want to learn how to do it. There are other ways of doing it. It will be explained in the other video. So that's all you need to know about um, emulators and how to download them. If you have any other questions that were not answered in this video, feel free to leave a comment concern whatever so that's it
I'll see you guys around and thank you for watching.